Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. In this occasion, the lesson shared is about the concept of sets and their operations. We'll be talking about the basic concept of sets, including the definition of set, its elements, way of writing, and notations or symbols. It is then followed by the explanation about relationship between set, set operation, and also set cardinality. By definition, set simply a collection of distinct objects. These objects may be a group of distinct numbers, persons, football clubs, or something else. So, we may have a set of integer numbers 4, 6, and 9, for instance, a set of foods, satay, soto, soup, and uh, noodles, a set of uh, zero, a set of students from Padul's mathematics class, or a set of numbers of x between 5 and 10. Each of the mentioned set has at least one element. In set S, 4, 6, and 9 are the elements. Then we have these foods as set F elements, zero as the only elements in set N, all part dual students as element in set A, and numbers between 5 and 10 as elements in our last set. When a set has no element, we, can, we call it a null or empty set. It is expressed like this. But be careful, the null set is not the same with the zero set or a set contains zero as its only element, as in our set n above. We, might, we may write sets by enumeration, just like in our first three sets here. We just put all the elements inside our set, but in other circumstances, enumerations becomes difficult. In such a case, we may write set by description. Set A and I clearly show the way of writing set by description. 4, 6, and 9, as we already know before, are all the members or elements of set S. It can be written like this. We use Greek letter epsilon to indicate that the numbers are belong to set S. Likewise, we can express satai epsilon f, meaning that satai is element of set f, or zero epsilon n, as zero is the element of the set n. On the other hand, we know that one clearly is not the element of set n, so we can write it like this instead. Similarly, since 4, 12, and 20 are not the elements of set I, so the expression of 4, 12, and 20 are not members of I can be expressed like this. So see the difference between, uh, see the difference of notation we use here. Okay, now let's talk about relationship between sets. Between sets, it means we're talking about more than one set altogether. To make it simple, suppose we deal with only two different sets A and B. A could be equal to B. That's the first possible relationship between sets. For example, we have set A and B like this. What can we observe? No matter how the elements of each set are ordered, since the element of A and B are identical, they are equal sets. Secondly, we may have this condition. Look again the elements of each set. Because every element of A is also an element of B, we call that A is a subset of B. We use this expression to indicate that all elements of A are contained in B, or this expression to say similarly that B includes all elements of A. Some textbooks use this symbol to express A as the subset of B. Some others use this symbol. The former actually says that A is the subset of or equal to B, while the latter simply says that A is a subset of B. But for now, we can use either one. What you have to note is that whereas the epsilon symbol relates an individual element to a set, the two symbols here relate a subset to a set. They are obviously different. 
what if the what if a is the subset of b and b is the subset of a in that case of course it only happens when a equals to b the third possible relationship is this since the two sets have no elements in common at all the two sets are said to be disjoint and accordingly a is not equal to b lastly we have this condition the two sets have some elements in common which are three and four but some other elements peculiar peculiar to each so n and b are neither equal nor disjoint and neither set is a subset of the other All the relationship can be visualized using the so-called Venn diagram. The first relationship would be just one circle representing both A and B, since A is equal to B. The second relationship would be like this. With A as the subset of B, the A circle will be inside the B circle. The third one is uh, obvious too, since the two sets are disjoint, the circles representing set A and B will be separated the last situation may bring us to one of the operations in set concept since the two sets have three and four as elements in common so we have intersection between two sets as visualized here the intersection is formalized like this with the reverse u symbol and three and th uh, three and four are elements of a and b So, we already know one of the set operations, the intersection, and there are three more. I rewrite here the intersection. The resulting set consists of the elements that belong to both A and B. Look, the keyword here is N. The second set operation is called union, symbolized with U. The set of uh, A union B consists, consists of the elements that belong to set A or set B. Or is the keyword now. Suppose that we have set A whose elements are 2 and 3. We also have set B whose elements are 3 and 4. The set of A union B then includes all the elements of A and B. The third set operation is the difference, or in our case, A minus B. When we have set uh, A and B like uh, this, the set of A minus B symbolized like this is set A after removing its elements that are also elements of B. 3 and 4 in set A are also elements of B. So after removing these elements, we have set A minus B consists of only 1 and 2. Saying it differently, set A minus B is set A but without element of B. Set A is this visually, reduced by set B, so what's left is this. Lastly, we have complement. Complement, complement of a set of set A means not set A. If A is the subset of the universal set U here, look at the visualiz uh, visualization too. Then the complement is just the elements of the universal set that are not the elements of set A. In other words, complement of A is actually U minus A or the difference between U and A. This Venn diagram from the Societal textbook perfectly illustrates all possible operations and relations between elements of three sets A, B, and C. So, for instance, we have intersection area between set A and set B. The area can be broken down into two areas, namely here area 1 and area 7. Area 1 is the intersection of set A and B subsected by set C, while area 7 is the intersection between set A, B, and C. We have also area 8, which is outside all the three sets. It's represented by the complementary of the three sets union.